Hi, I'm Amber McDonald for Nashville Newsine, and joining us today is Kelly O'Neill, who's an outstanding, talented artist on our gallery. Thank you so much, Kelly, for having us here today. Thank yes. you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, we love your work, and we're so happy that you could be here today. Thank you. First, tell me, um, what made you want to start painting? I loved being creative. Ever since I was little, I remember I was four years old, and my mom saw me in the back seat playing with Play-Doh and a few minutes later I gave them a rose and it apparently looked like a rose and they thought that I might be an artist someday and I actually didn't realize that was something that could even be done as a young person. Um, I didn't know any professional artists. Um, I just knew I loved to create and so I guess I was really little when I had the love for it and I was about 18 when I realized I could do it for a living. So. Wow, that's amazing. So tell me, as you got older, who are the influences in your life that most kind of inspire your work today? Well, um, in art college, you get to take a lot of art history classes, and I was exposed to a lot of artist work, and um, the Renaissance period was my favorite. Um, Rembrandt, with all of his rich brown tones and um, his portrait work, was just something that I wanted to do someday and um, be very realistic with my subjects so that, you know, they looked real and you could feel the emotion in the painting and um, and then John Singer Sargent is another portrait artist that's a favorite of mine. I just love his work and I got to see some of it in New York. Um, but probably my favorite, um, and I know it's cliche, but Michelangelo, the amount of work I'm he was sure. able to Absolutely. do in his lifetime and Absolutely. just the brilliance of it was amazing. I got to go to Italy and see some of it firsthand. Um, in St. Peter's Basilica I got to see the wow. Pieta and it was it was the culmination of my dreams of art, just to be able to stand there and see this magnificent piece of artwork. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so tell There's me, a lot. <laughs> your education, it seems like you've had a lot of influences, a lot of education. Mm -hmm. Where did you attend uh, art school? I went to Union University in Jackson. It's a very small liberal arts college, um, small art program, but I really enjoyed it. I got to um, learn about clay and ceramics and graphic design and I took some intro painting and drawing classes and just kind of ran with those on my own. Wow, oh my goodness. So, so do you visualize your art before, like if you were going to draw a subject, how do you, how do you sit down and say, okay, how am I going to create this, this piece of art? Do you visualize it? How, how does that kind of, how does that process work? Um, most of the time, well, when I do commission work, obviously the, the client will give me a photograph to work from and Sometimes I'll have a choice to choose between a few of them, but a lot of times it's their favorite picture and we decide from that point whether it should be charcoal or oil or if it would work better in a large format or small. But for my personal paintings, um, I typically see the whole thing in my mind before I do mm -hmm. it and um, I end up hiring models that kind of fit the description of the person in my mind and get the photographer and all of that, set it up, take a bunch of pictures and then pick the favorite and just kind of go with it and start painting from there. So they could be somebody, somebody that you, that you see from life and you paint them just directly or from um, a f photographer. Oh my goodness, yeah. wow, so you're just so well versed in your arts. That's amazing. Thank you. So um, also, so what, what is your favorite medium to work in? What, do you have a favorite type of art that you like to work with? <laughs> um, that's a funny question because I get that a lot. It's usually the medium I'm working in at the time, but the two that I usually do are charcoal for drawings and oil for paintings. Occasionally I'll throw in some colored pencil or pastel to add a little color, but those are my two favorites, I guess. Two favorites, okay. So what is your biggest challenge personally as it pertains to creating work? Do you always sit down and say, and it immediately comes to you, or is it sometimes you're just like, oh, I've been on this for five months and this is just not going to work? What are the challenges that, I guess I don't think, it, unless you are an artist, you really kind of understand how that, how that all works. Yeah. Um, I've thought about this a lot and I think my perfectionism is um, both an mm -hmm. asset to mm -hmm. what I do because I am doing realistic work, but it's also very frustrating because I get upset with myself if something's not going kind of the way that I want. And I've got a few paintings where I kind of put them on the back burner because I just couldn't, I couldn't stand to think that they were failing, but if I didn't finish them, they were not yet a failure. So, um, <laughs> but most of the time it goes pretty smoothly and I kind of get into the rhythm of how the painting's going and just keep on trucking until it's finished. So. Well, this is a, a question that I'm just dying to know. So you have had uh, photos or art that's ha actually been in the Skimmerhorn. Tell us about what that's like to have such a, that's such a huge honor. How did that come about? 
Um, actually, there's a little shop in Hillsborough Village called Natural Selections, and they carry a variety of different things, and she had carried, Robin's the owner there, and she had carried one of my pieces um, called Eternal Song, and it's of an old gentleman playing the violin, and you can tell by looking at him, he's a master, and he's amazing at what he does, and she was carrying some of my work there, and the man who's in charge of the gift shop there, the Scrimmer Horn, saw it and said, I need to find this artist and get a hold of her, so she gave her my information and he asked me if they could carry my artwork in their store and so it was a huge honor to wow, be able to that is, to, 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 to say that. that that is yeah. just at such an early age too and there was another painting that you wanted to discuss that you were really passionate about tell me about that painting as well okay this is my latest painting it's called mine for a moment and um, it was inspired by um, a story <laughs> that's not really a happy story um, it was I just got married last October and a couple months after we got married, I heard about the death of one of my friends that I had been going to church with, and um, his name was Daniel Smith, and he had um, been diagnosed with cancer, and it took him his life in about six months. And the week that I found out about it, um, it's right after I got married, and I have this man in my life that I love so much, and I was struggling with that whole balance of how do you love someone so deeply, but you don't hang on too tightly, and assume that you get 80 years with this person mm. and um, I, I realized that I could lose my husband in the same way that Daniel was lost and um, I was at a concert I was at an Andrew Peterson concert and one of the songs was moving me and I saw an image of this little girl playing in the field with her dad and he, he was holding onto her hand and he let go and she looks back at him and she's smiling and laughing and he's loving her but he's letting her go and he's realizing that she's only his for a moment and he's not guaranteed oh. anything with her and I knew that this was going to be my answer to that balance of how do you love but let go and I had to do it for me but since then um, it's been it's been a painting that have um, a lady from our church lost her baby nine days after mm -hmm. she was born and it was a heart condition they didn't know about and um, so I dedicated the painting to Sadie and to Daniel and um, I'm hoping that it'll bring comfort to people and maybe remind those of us who still, who have people in our lives that we love that we can um, just realize that it's, they're a gift. We have to enjoy every moment and, and just keep things in perspective. So what, one of the things we want to do with that, my husband and I were speaking about it, um, is donating a large number of these prints to families of kids who have been lost to cancer. And we're talking to Vanderbilt Children's Hospital to see if we can work that out. Well, so what a charity and a ministry. That is wonderful. That is wonderful news. So what do you hope that people walk away with when they see your work? What are some things that, that they hope that they walk away with when well, they see Well, um, I hope that they find them beautiful. Um, in art school, we had a lot of discussions on what is the purpose of art? Um, does it have to be, does it have to have some ethereal deep meaning or does it have to just appeal to someone's senses and what really is art can anything be art and I was always of the opinion that it, it can be beautiful it doesn't have to be meaningful so I definitely want people to see the beauty in things but a lot of my paintings the ones that are closest to me are ones that have um, deep meaning or that I feel like God inspired me to do that say something about him or say something about the creator the ultimate creator oh, sure. so um, yeah I love it when people ask me what paintings mean some of them aren't completely obvious when you see them so I like to be able to just kind of explain it and sometimes they take away something completely different than what I meant but that's okay too so if there was one thing that you uh, could do if you were no longer for some odd reason if you, if you weren't able to paint anymore is there one <sighs> thing else what would you be doing right now if you were not <laughs> creating if you're not painting is there anything else you think you could do or is this pretty much it <laughs> after you took my straight jacket off <laughs> which I would need if you told me I couldn't create art anymore um, I think I would go to food I love I love creating food as well and I actually thought I was gonna go to culinary school that was my dream in high school um, again this is before I realized you could do art for a living I didn't didn't know it was possible, thought I might have to wait till you know, I've had kids and they go to college and then I get to sit in a little studio and make things. But um, I thought I wanted to make beautiful desserts and make the sculptural kind of things you'll see on the Food Network and the challenges where they, you know, they have people from oh, all over yeah. the world. So I think I would probably move to that. Oh, well, to something pretty yeah, with still, food. <laughs> still creating. There right. you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna eat over your house more often. Yeah. Too. <laughs> okay. So what are some fun, fun facts about you um, 
that uh, may or may not be directly related to your art. <laughs> Anything, it's kind of something you'd want our viewers to, to know about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a health nut and a vegetarian. Oh. Um, my husband and I both are, and we love to travel, and we love to um, talk about food and make food, and people think of healthy food as not really fun sometimes, and we love to open people up to the different things that are actually very good for you and very yummy as well. So. Um, I think one of the things we want to do more, and we, we've only been married a year, but we want to travel a lot and see some more countries and see some more beautiful things that inspire. And of course, they'll be turned into paintings at some point as well. <laughs> that is, that's a great business as well. It's fun. Now tell us, if somebody is, is watching and, and it's just I'm sure they're going to be blown away by, by your talent, where can they go to purchase and, uh, to, or, or, if you, or if they want to hire you to, to create mm -hmm. something for them or for their children or anything? Where, what was the best way to get a hold of you in order um, to do that? Probably the best way is my website. I have a lot of my images, my commission work, and my fine art pieces on my website. I've got um, a link to videos. We've started doing um, sped up time lapse videos of me actually working, and you can see those on YouTube. But my website is www.theartistoflife.com, and you can find the videos at youtube.com slash theartistoflife. So, and my name is Kelly O'Neill, and you can Google that. And it shows up, <laughs> it shows up pretty quick. <laughs> Wow. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to add to, about about your work or, or your talent that, that people, again, may w want to know about you that I may have not missed or may, may have come? <laughs> well, one thing that I love to do is encourage artists that maybe want to do this for a living. Maybe they're in school or they never really knew an artist. And I love to encourage someone to do that, um, to live their dream. And even if it's not art, um, I had a lot of people that told me I couldn't do this. Right. A lot. And surprisingly some of them were professors that I had in college and I'm in art school so it's kind of interesting that people would kind of sway me away from that um, when you're going to school for it but um, I just I wake up every morning I do what I love um, I sometimes do what I love in my pajamas and I I get to do that and it's a joy and people are paying me to do this and it's fulfilling and I just love when people um, can do what they love, no matter what it is. So, if anyone's listening, that maybe some encouragement yeah, there. Yeah, it can yeah. be done, and just go for it. Yeah, <laughs> that's for wonderful. It. Now you have a lot of interesting stories behind all of your pieces. Tell me about your particular piece, Unblemished. Okay, that one definitely has an amazing story. Um, this was one of the paintings that I saw in my mind before I was supposed to paint it, and I know it was from God. It wasn't one of my own ideas. Um, so I saw this old man holding a lamb. And so I needed to find the man, and I needed to find the lamb. And I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. There's not a lot of sheep farmers around here. So I started looking and trying to keep an eye out for a bearded gentleman that would kind of fit the description that I saw. And um, I had looked and called these farms and everything, could not find any sh people who raised sheep. And so I just kind of put it on the back burner and I was at an art show one time and this lady comes by and she said, do you do graphic design too? And I said, actually I do. She said, um, I really need my business card redone. Can you help me? And she handed it to me and she raises lambs of oh, all things. Wow. So I, I tucked it away and I said, I'm going to call you in the spring. I'm going to find this man and do this painting. And she said, that's great. So um, one day I was in Panera Bread Company and I looked over and this man, this perfect old gentleman was sitting there with his family eating. And I said, this is my chance. I'm just going to talk to him. I don't care if he's eating lunch, you know, this is my moment with him. So I came over and I said, would you be interested in doing this painting, being a model for a painting? And he said, I'd love to. It sounds great. So he grows his beard out every year for Christmas and then he trims it first of the year and he grows it out again and he's Santa at the malls and everything. <sighs> So he said, well, I, I can probably hold my wife off. She always likes me to cut it as soon as I can, but maybe we can hold her off. Well, he calls me on January 5th, or yeah, January 5th, and he says, um, can you just let me know when these lambs are going to be born because she's really wanting me to cut this thing. And I said, well, I'll call, but I think it's going to be a few more months. So I call her, and she said, you're not going to believe this, but we had a male lamb, perfectly white, beautiful, born completely out of season on Christmas Eve. Oh, I know. That I, is amazing. I said, we're going to come tomorrow. Can we come? So I have a photographer that I use for all of my, um, my photo shoots, and he lives in Missouri. So I'm prepared to pay him whatever I need to pay him to get him here. And I called him, and he said, um, you're not going to believe this. 
I just rolled into town for a wedding, so I can help you. Oh my goodness. And so we went out there and we took the pictures and the lamb was perfect and the exact size we needed and it was only like a week old and so sweet. It was meant to be and I had the whole thing painted in two weeks and it's a record for me for a large painting like this. So I don't remember a single brush stroke, it just happened. It was one of those that was just apart from anything that I could have done on Just my everything own. just came, came together, together the way it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That is truly, truly yeah. a testament. <laughs> I'm glad you, you shared that. And you Thank have several you. other pieces um, that, um, that you have. And, um, tell me about the Asian trafficking uh, piece that inspired you to draw uh, th this one piece of artwork. Yeah, this piece is called Commodity. And um, back when I was doing my senior show for school, I had to I painted a lot of children and women from other countries and I kind of highlighted things that they struggle with that maybe Americans don't have to deal with quite as much. And one of the things that I learned about was child trafficking, which is basically the sale and the trade of children across um, countries' borders for, um, for manual labor um, or the sex industry. Sometimes they're pimped out to brothels at really young ages, like seven, eight years mm. old. And it broke my heart and I knew that someday I was going to have to do something about this issue um, in my own small way. And as I do with most things, it ends up being art that does this. Mm -hmm. So um, I painted this little girl, and she's from Nepal, and she's sitting in the street. And you can see that there's a man in the background, there's a red door, and he's standing there, and he's the brothel owner. And she's having to stand out in the street and get customers for him. And there's a sign that reads, in her language, wanted to sell. And it's a painting that I know people won't get just by looking at it, so that I'm actually hoping that they ask me so that I can bring up the issue of child trafficking. And how there's millions of children right now who are displaced from their homes. They've either been kidnapped or their parents have sold them or their parents have thought they were giving them a good education or a good life in America or whatever. And then they've been abused and used. And it's, it's just something that needs to stop. And it's gonna stop with awareness and it's already laws are being put into place that are helping to prevent this from happening more and we can see hope on the horizon but there's so much more that needs to be done and um, two years ago I actually had the opportunity to go and work with children who have been rescued from brothels in Thailand and I worked with um, it's called the Abba House and it's these two people who gave up their retirement and used all of their savings to open an orphanage for children who were either at risk to be trafficked or they had actually been in brothels and they were rescued from it and it was absolutely incredible to meet these strong, beautiful women and teenagers and they just, they, they still stole my heart, you oh, know, sure. and I come back and um, I just wanted to bring awareness to that issue and talk about their stories and you can actually support the ABBA House as well. They have, you can Google the ABBA House Foundation and they're in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and they definitely need support because there's more and more girls who need homes, and they're taking in boys as well, and um, they're running out of room. So. Oh, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that and bringing awareness to that important issue, and the ABBA House is where people can find out mm -hmm. about more about that. That's yeah. wonderful to bring awareness over here to the States. Well, thank you so much, Kelly, for having us today and sharing your art stories with us. You're extremely talented, and we really thank you for having us today. Here. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> And I'm Amber McDonald. Thank you for joining us for Nashville Museum Spotlight on the Arts.